Today's discussion is all about types of simple machines. So at the end of this video, you will be able to identify the different types of simple machines. Well, the different types of simple machines are lever, pulley, wheel and axle, screw, wedge, inclined plane, and gear. So the first type is lever. A lever is a straight rod or board that pivots in a point known as a fulcrum. The fulcrum can be moved depending on the weight of the object to be lifted or the force you wish to exert. Pushing down on one end of a lever results in the upward motion of the opposite end of the fulcrum. Example, the handle on a toaster is a lever because when you push the handle down, it lowers a wedge which triggers a button that tells the toaster to turn on. Why an oven door is a lever? Because when you push and pull on the door's handle, the door pivots and hinges, which is the fulcrum. Well, the broom also is a lever. Why? Because when using a broom, one hand acts as the fulcrum and the other hand pushes the broom across the floor. The second type is pulley. A pulley is a wheel that usually has a groove around the outside edge. This groove is for a rope or belt to move around the pulley. Pulling down on the rope can lift an object attached to the rope. Work is made easier. Example, some household blinds also use pulleys to lower and raise them. Another one is the flag poles. Flag poles use similar pulleys to raise and lower the flag. Also, on a sailboat, a pulley is used to raise and lower the sail. The third type is a wheel and axle. A wheel and axle has a larger wheel or wheels connected by a smaller cylinder called axle and is fastened to the wheel so that they turn together. When the axle is turned, the wheel moves a greater distance than the axle, but less force is needed to move it. The axle moves a shorter distance, but it takes greater force to move it. Example, cars are able to move because of their wheels and axles. The wheels and axles help reduce friction and allow a heavy object like a car to move around easily. But why a doorknob is a wheel and axle? Because when you turn the knob, it rotates an axle, which then unlatches the door. What about the pencil sharpener? A pencil sharpener has a wheel and axle because when you turn the crank or the handle, the axle carries the movement to the sharpener. It turns to sharpen the pencil. The fourth type is screw. A screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a shaft or cylinder. This inclined plane allows the screw to move itself or to move an object or material surrounding it when rotated. Example, the bottom of a light bulb is a screw. You turn it clockwise into a light socket to screw it and counterclockwise to unscrew it. Then, a screwdriver is a wheel and axle. As the screwdriver turns the screw, the inclined plane on the screw pulls it into the wood. Also, a spiral staircase is a simple machine that enables us to ascend or descend with ease. The fifth type is wedge. A wedge consists of two back-to-back -back inclined planes. A wedge looks like an inclined plane, but it works differently. It can either hold things together, as in a doorstop or nail, or it can split things apart, like an axe or chisel. Example, Push pins are wedges. When you push them into the wall, they pierce paper just as an axe, another wedge, would chop into wood. But why the runners on a sled are wedges? Because as you fly down a snow-covered hill, the runners slice through the snow. Then the shark's teeth are wedges. When it bites down on food, the teeth work like a wedge. The sixth type is inclined plane. An inclined plane is a ramp. It helps us to move heavy objects more easily. We use less force, but we have to apply the force over a distance. 
Friction is one problem encountered in using a ramp to move heavy objects. Example, a ramp is an inclined plane. Inclined planes allow heavy objects to be moved up or down using less effort over a distance. Then, a boat propeller is an inclined plane. Why? Because as the propeller blades spin around, they push water along their slanted surfaces, which makes the boat move through water. And finally, gears. The gears are one way to transfer motion from one place to another. They work together in groups of two or more. Gears are measured by counting the number of teeth they have. When the teeth of two gears fit together and one gear turns, it will cause the other gear to turn, but in the opposite direction. In any pair of gears, the larger one will rotate more slowly than the smaller one, but it will rotate with greater force. Example, clocks. The clocks have gears inside. The gears turn the energy of the clock's wind-up motor into movement, which controls the minute and our hands. That ends our lesson for the day. Please don't forget to answer your workbook pages 96 to 98 and students book page 155. My name is Noreen Sikabasa. Have a great day and goodbye. For more videos, please hit the button below.